So far in this course, we have seen some of the basic fundamentals of React, looking at components, props, conditional rendering, events, and a few others. Well, as a next step, we'll be moving on to some intermediate fundamentals of React. And this video is a summary where I outline some of the topics I'm going to be covering in the next couple of videos. So first I have on my list here is state. State is something that you have probably heard about when it comes to frameworks like React or even other frameworks out there. The idea of state is that a component can have a state and that state can change based on other circumstances. I like thinking of components like living things. For example, myself, a few years ago, I was shorter than my current height. That is a state change. I was shorter before and now I am taller. Another state example is my body temperature could be cold or it could be hot. Now you can use that same mindset for components components are not exactly living things but i just like thinking of them like that a component can have a specific state and that state can change and if we look at this app dot gsx components here here we declared a variable called show pricing cards a good state example here could be that show pricing cards is a state this is not how you declare state in components don't worry we're going to look at how to declare state or change state as we proceed but you can think of this now as a state which currently holds a value of true and then based on some circumstances like maybe an event is triggered a button is clicked the state of this value can then become false now in this case i am the one changing the value directly but like i said this could be a state update that comes from a button click or something else let me take this back to true another concept we'll be looking at is the concept of re-rendering and re-rendering is something that usually occurs when the state of a component changes now so far we have looked at the concept of rendering right when you come here and you return this button here this is what react would render on the dom in pricing card here when you return all this bunch of things up to this end this is rendering you're telling react what to render on the dom when this component is used in app.gsx we have the return and then everything here is what is going to be rendered to the dom the concept of re-rendering here is that for the first time react is going to re-render this app component so we're going to have everything here in the dom and this is going to use the default state of the component but then let's say this state now changes to false React is now going to use this new state to re-render this component. So you're now going to have all of these here again re-rendered using the new state information. And because here we have show pricing cards true before this is conditionally rendered, because this new state now has show pricing cards as false you can see that this part here is not included in the dom then let's say you change it again to true another re-rendering is going to happen where react is going to use this new state information to re-render everything here and because show pricing card is now true you now have this also included in the dom so re-rendering doesn't mean that your component is going to appear twice in the dom no it just means that based on the current state information react is going to render that component the first time react renders it you just call it a render but if react has to render it again then that is what you call a re-render don't worry if this doesn't make a lot of sense we're going to look at it later another concept we're going to talk about is state management we've already looked at the idea of state a component can have a state and that state can change but then there are various ways you can also manage such state you can choose to create a state here in this app component you call it show pricing cards and you can manage manage this state in this app component but there are also some cases where you want to create a state that can be managed from different components let's say you want to have a state called dark mode and then you want the app.gsx to be able to change that state or you want pricing card to be able to change that state or you want the button component to be able to change that state so in a sense you want to create a state that can be shared between multiple components this is where the idea of global state management comes in where you have a global state that multiple components have access to and they can update the state and that concept we'll be looking at is life cycle remember when i said i like thinking of components like living things right well this is the idea of life cycles living things can be born they can 
grow, have different stages of their life, and living things can die. And that is the same idea of components. Components can be born, which is when they are rendered on the dome. Their states can change, they can grow, so many things can happen to them while they are on the dome. And then such components can also die. What does die mean? Die means when that component is unmounted from the dome. For example, if we should come here and change this to false, you'd see that this place that we have conditional rendering here, this whole thing here is unmounted from the DOM. If this was a component, for example, called something, you can say in this case that the something component has died because it is unmounted from the DOM. I made a little mistake here. So the concept of life cycles in React is interesting because sometimes you may want to do something when a component is rendered on the DOM. You may want to execute a piece of code or do whatever it is. There are also cases where when a component is unmounted from the DOM, you want to do some things and there are also some cases where when the state of a component changes you want to do some things so this is where life cycle helps you to do different things in your component because in different stages of that component's life you can execute one code or the other we're also going to be looking at the concept of react hooks and react hooks is also tied to life cycle the idea of react hooks is that you have some functions exposed to you from react which allows you to hook into the component life cycle. I already told you that when it comes to component life cycle, you can execute different code at different points in a component life. This is what React hooks allows you to do. So you have a hook that allows you to manage the state of a component. You have a hook that allows you to trigger or execute a code when the component is born. You also have hooks that allow you to execute a code when the component dies. There are many hooks exposed from React which allows you to do a lot of interesting things and you can also create create your own custom hooks, although your custom hooks will be built on top of React hooks. Another concept we'll be looking at is routing, and this is where you can use tools like React Router. So far, the application we have built is just on one page, but what if we wanted to have an about page or a contact page or a dashboard page, all those different routes. Well, this is where routing comes in, and with tools like React Router, we can declare different routes, we can have an about route, and we can tell React react on this route, render this component. On this other route, render this component. So this is what we're going to be talking about routing and navigation for the different pages you want to have in your applications. Now, don't worry if all of these concepts do not make sense to you yet. I mean, in this video, we didn't really look at the code or the syntax for doing these different things. I just wanted to give you an idea of the topics we'll be looking at moving forward. So if it doesn't make sense, don't worry, we're going to be covering each of these topics in the following set of videos. And we 